All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. So this is the roughly annual world oil situation update that I kind of neglected for a couple of years. So as of the end or near the end of this year, 2025, world oil supply or global oil production is in terms of actual capability starting to enter its peak slash plateau. It hasn't reached its highest possible point yet. That was going to be sometime in the second half of the 2020s. But whereas excluding years like 2020, the COVID year, global oil production has been increasing each year. However, as of now, it's going to start to level out because of a number of factors, namely the biggest driver of oil production growth over the last bit of time the U.S. has reached its has reached its second peak or has entered its final plateau area, fluctuating up and down now between a little bit over 13.6 and down a bit under 13.3. It's been wobbling in this area for about a year now, but the U.S. has reached the limits of shale and was actually going down. But the startup of a few larger oil fields offshore and a few projects back up home in Alaska on the North Slope have given sudden upward boosts and brought it back up a bit a couple times. But with a straight line effectively able to be drawn through the oscillations in net totality, U.S. production is plateauing at this moment. So that is the flatlining of the country that was providing a decent portion of the global oil production growth over the last bit of recent years up to this point, and the holdout in this roughly 13 and a half area will go on for a couple more years before the occasional addition of fields in the Gulf and fields back up home in Alaska is no longer able to keep up with what the shale decline will be by that point in time. Mexico, the U.S.'s southern neighbor, is also in a flat line. They were previously declining, but they have managed to stall themselves out around 1.7 or 1.8 and will continue to fluctuate around in this general area for probably the next five or four years as they do have more fields coming online at just enough of a spaced out pace in time to where it should keep them from declining too far but not really allow them to push that far back up towards two. So they are effectively in a net flat line as well. Canada and Brazil, continuing through the Americas, are continuing to grow for the time being. Canada is eventually going to reach a plateau, probably between five and a half and six million barrels per day. Brazil will probably end up hitting a actual peak above five or five and a half but for the moment over the next few years each of them or both of them is going to be climbing up at roughly an average of a bit over a hundred thousand barrels per day along with a Guyana as Guyana although there are some gap years does have it scheduled out that about one new field will get added per year and those fields range in size from usually anywhere from 120 up to 220 or even 250 so including the gap years, they average down towards about 150 and factoring in the decline that is just starting to stack on from their earliest fields, it brings it down closer to about 100. So those three together end up giving you a net global total addition of about plus 300,000 per year. Again, that is at least for the next few years or so. Then elsewhere around them, you have Colombia, who is dropping off by a bit less than 50,000 per year. Ecuador, who is dropping by more like 25,000 per year. And then other minor producers throughout predominantly South America who are dropping by less amounts because their production was less to begin with. Close to minus 100 in net total. But then you have the plus 50,000 per year from Argentina for the next few years, giving you a net plus of 250,000 barrels per day per year. Norway had a sudden jump upwards recently because of the addition of a large new field, but those are not as abundant. 
and they have resumed their decline of a bit over 50,000 barrels per day per year, 60, 70 maybe. The UK has gotten so low in production now that its declines are in lower amounts, around fittingly 30 or 40. So a net negative 100 between the two of them, giving you a global total of positive 150. Kazakhstan over in Central Asia is effectively on a plateau. They did go up from 2 up to 2.2 because of the expansion at one field, but that was kind of a one-time sudden deal. Otherwise, they are basically on a capacity plateau, so that's a net zero from them. Not the kind of net zero you're used to hearing about, but the other, other net zero. Azerbaijan is in its terminal decline, and combined with some of the minor other numbers from, from primarily Turkmenistan across the Caspian Sea, you get a total of negative 50, bringing you down to positive 100 per year. Dodging around the Persian Gulf, around OPEC, we'll get to them in a second, they're a special case. Egypt has dropped down in its stair-step fashion to about half a million, and it'll hold out here for a few years, the number of years being uncertain. So they're effectively going to be a net zero for the next couple of years. Algeria, after declining to about a million, has, in terms of its capacity, again, not in terms of the actual amount, because they were part of the OPEC production cuts for a while, but in terms of its capacity, they have managed to hold off their decline around a million for the moment, so they also factor in at net zero for the time being, at least. Libya's production was suppressed because of actual destruction and damage within the country, not because of intentional withholding via political production cuts. So their restoration does count as actual added new production, semi-technically, and they've been managing to bring themselves up at about 50,000 per year. So that gives you net positive 150. Nigeria is in a similar state, but they're not on a predictable trajectory. Their repair and restoration of stuff is completely sporadic and unpredictable. So for the moment, because there's nothing else to do with them, we're going to have to count them as net zero. The small Congo is managing to hold its production right around its current area. Gabon, after jumping up from that new field, has resumed its moderate decline. Maybe 10, 15,000 barrels per year, we'll see. Angola, after managing to hold out for a bit, has resumed a decline that will probably end up being around 50 per year. If it's a bit less, you can throw Gabon in on top of that. So that brings you from global positive 150 down to global positive 100. Namibia will not come onto the oil production scene until 2029 at the earliest. So they do not factor in for the immediate future vector. India has managed to stall their decline for the moment. And given what they have set up, probably can keep that up for a few years. So they factor in at net zero. Indonesia and Malaysia are both in slow declines, losing a few tens of thousands of barrels per year, as they do have more untouched territory, primarily offshore, but everything they have is basically flat ocean plains offshore, and those shallow flat plains are where you typically get a lot more natural gas than oil, which is what they're seeing. So those two are going down at a few tens of thousands per year each. Australia at very minor amounts, and Vietnam and Thailand, because their production was so small to begin with, at very minor amounts. Somewhere between negative 50 and 100, we'll go for safety and say only negative 50, bringing us down to global positive addition of 50,000 barrels per day per year. China's oil production is still just managing to get pushed up by tiny bits. They're likely going to be curving out in the immediate future, so they'll end up being net zero, but for benefit of the doubt, we'll call them plus 50, so back up to global plus 100 per year. Oman is holding right around a million barrels per day, so they're plateauing, so they're keeping plateaued at net zero. Russia is in decline, but their decline rate is not predictable, nor is it easy to pinpoint down as it's been well over a year now that they've considered their oil and gas data to be classified and thus 
don't actually officially publish anything. There are numerous ways to get around stuff and work things out with a bunch of tedious backwards math, basically. And that has worked out to finding them, especially now because of all the recent damage and forced shutdowns from the two plus straight months of drone attacks on the oil and gas infrastructure of around uh, probably a bit under eight and a half million barrels per day by now. Although according to the Russian government, who broke its own rules and gave oil production data publicly after previously insisting up until classifying their data that their production was unchanged and not moving up or down, they were holding it as close to perfectly still as possible. They now, in light of all this damage that has more than obviously put quite a damper on things, they are now insisting that actually their production is increasing. And in the last month or two, they've jumped it up by 300 or 400,000 barrels per day by magic or something, I guess. So anyways, their rate of decline is difficult to pin down. But for safety, we'll assume 300,000 barrels per day per year, maybe. If the attacks continue, then that's going to get exacerbated, but assuming that, that would then put us at a global net total of minus 200,000 barrels per day per year going forward for at least the next few years. And then we come to the Persian Gulf and the primary OPEC members. And this is where we have to get into the differentiation between total global oil capacity and active production as active production can change for any number of means, be turned off by turning what might as well amount to an oven dial for temperature. OPEC this year has begun raising their production back upwards, but remember that's not new production. That's not new anything that was discovered and is being added on. That is their prior production plateaus that they are just reactivating. But again, like a oven dial or a volume dial on a microphone like the one I'm recording on, they had just dialed down existing capacity and have now switched it back on. And most of them are plateauers, Saudi Arabia being the biggest at usually 10 million barrels per day. They can still hold that until probably 2032 or 2033 after which they will inevitably begin a very gradual decline. The UAE at a 4 million barrel per day plateau could hold that until probably around 2040, maybe the early 2040s, not entirely positive. Kuwait at a 3 million barrel per day plateau, a bit earlier than the UAE. Qatar at a 1.3 million barrel per day plateau can hold that for a couple more years. But as we hit the final couple or few years of the 2020s, they will tip over and start declining. Iran maxed out at around 3.4 and has actually been declining since then as everything is internally falling apart, not even from damage from any kind of airstrikes. They don't have that excuse like Russia does as airstrikes that were performed on them were primarily done on aircraft air defense systems and all their nuclear research laboratories. Their capacity has degraded because their fields are just so old. A lot of them have been in production since the 1920s. And they need huge amounts of natural gas diverted to them to be re-injected to maintain pressure. And even that is not able to hold everything together. And so they are actually declining from that 3.4 very slowly. Again, at the few tens of thousands of barrels per day per year rate. And then you have Iraq, the one Persian Gulf OPEC member who is actually adding new production, increasing production capacity from actual new stuff and production project expansions. Their total capacity is at around five. At the moment, they're producing around four and a half. And also, supposedly, some of the first new fields and expansion projects are going to activate around the end of this year, giving a 200,000 barrel per day boost or a bit more. But that also remains to be seen because that was also the case last year, and we ended up with a fair number of delays. 
over the remaining 2020s, over the next few years, it is expected for them to get enough online to go up over six. So that would be one million added over the next four years or so, or about 250,000 plus per year. So that would bring global total capacity back up into the net positive by a little bit. But by the end of the 2020s, that will be getting weighed back down by, at that point, accelerated U.S. decline, which will be picking up speed after these first couple years of plateau, along with overturns and declines elsewhere around the world. Although there will be some bouncing out that will come about in the early 2030s from the emergence of, from the emergence of Namibia, Suriname, and a few others. So the whole arrangement as of the moment looks like for the immediate future, we are seeing what will be the final global oil peak, but it's not going to be a sharp, hubbard peak and drop. It's going to be more of a initial really slow plateau out and then gradual bump over into a kind of slower decline, at least for that little bit for the 2030s. Before we hit around the 2040s, then it's going to speed up significantly. All right, that's it for this long, rambly one. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. There's links in the description to a drive folder with the graphs you saw in this video and all kinds of other graphs that are free to access at any time. There's also a link to my cat's YouTube channel in the top in comment. May God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.